guys. Um, my name's Melanie. Um, welcome to the first episode of my podcast. If you're watching, thanks for stopping by. It's nice to meet you all. If you want, you could comment down below to just say hi. I'd love to interact with you guys. Um, well, since you all don't know me, my name's Melanie. Um, I've been knitting for about seven years now. Um, I've been spinning for maybe about a year or so now with the drop spindle and then I've recently gotten, not recently, but maybe like a few months ago got my Ashford Joy so I've been spinning on this since then. And um, I also weave and um, what else do I do? I think that's about it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to join the community, just say hi. Um, I've also always, not always, but I've been knitting my own patterns for a while now and I've been wanting to get them out there in the world so I thought this would be a great way to show you. So yeah, welcome. Um, you can find me on, you can find me on Ravelry, Instagram as Cozy Cardigans. Um, I'll just put that info up here somewhere and also everything that I talk about will be linked down below if possible. If not, then um, I'll put it in the show notes somehow. Yeah. So let's get started. Um, well, first off, finished objects. I just finished this sweater. It's like a big sleeved square shaped sweater. It's a big crop. Let me get up to show you. It's a big crop because I like to wear high-waisted pants, so my belly button is like all the way down here. But it's cropped and big and light. I live in Southern California, so it's really hard to knit sweaters that are versatile, I guess, for the type of weather that we have down here because it's usually pretty well not pretty hot but it's never really sweater weather till you get to this time of year or like maybe january february sometimes so this one is my own pattern hoping to get it written up it's like uh not ribbing i don't know what you call this type of ribbing but it's like ribbed and then i switch from the pearls to knits every so often. So if you look, I start with shorter switches, so like every four or five rows, and then I let it grow into every six rows as it gets down, so it makes this really nice texture. I really like it. And then it's also a folded collar, so it goes in the inside. I did like a three needle bind off. Um, yeah, I want to get this pattern written up. Probably make it longer for everybody else because although I do like my sweaters a bit more cropped, I know a lot of people would like to get that stomach area a little more covered. But yeah, for this one, it's kind of getting hot here. For this yarn, I used this um, parade yarn from Amirisu. I got it while I was in a trip to visit my family in Japan. They both, both my parents are from Japan, so my grandparents are there. So I always make sure to visit the yarn shop. But it's the Festive Summer Blend and fingering weight made of 60% wool, 20% cotton, 10% silk, and 10% linen. Spun and hand dyed in Japan. And honestly, this is one of my favorite yarns now. I loved knitting with this. It just feels so soft and light and I think it'd be really good for Southern California because it's not just wool, it's also cotton, silk, and linen. So yeah, it's this sweater. I have yet to name it. Any ideas would be very welcome. But um, so yeah, that's my only FO. Um, I guess we could do acquisitions. It's not, 
I got a lot because my birthday was on Thanksgiving this year. So everybody knows that I just want yarn. So everyone just gave me gift cards to Etsy and picks. So I got this, it's this really nice, not bright blue, but um, like a brighter than navy blue. It's like heathered a bit. You can see. It's the Drops Lima Mix. I like using Drops yarn because it's so affordable. I know it's not the best company to get your yarn from, but honestly, it's really hard for me to purchase yarn in, in sweater quantities just because the price points are usually a little high for my taste. So Drops and Knit Picks it is, but I mean, I do like to splurge every so often because the parade yarn definitely is not the same price point as drops in the picks, but we hope. So um, this is, I believe, like a light worsted, but it's almost like, honestly, like a fingering weight. I'm planning to make the Ondala sweater by Michelle Wang with this, which is really nice blue. I don't really have that color in my wardrobe, but I think I have a lot of Pants that would look really good with this blue color. I got that. And I also got, so I accidentally got two sweater quantities of this mustard palette yarn. It's my first time feeling it and knitting with it, but I was kind of worried about it because that there's, I mean, the reviews are usually pretty positive about this yarn, but I mean, obviously there are some bad reviews. So I was a little worried about it, especially because it's so cheap. But honestly, it's pretty soft. It's not super soft, but it's decently soft. And um, it's like, cause this kind of, like, cause it has silk in it, it's a bit more shiny, but this is more matte, which I wanted for my other sweater. And again, I said I got two sweater quantities. So I'm thinking I will knit this again, make another sample of this as I write the pattern with this muted yarn as like another version, like a, long, a little longer, the little longer version. And then um, I'm thinking maybe I'll also have it so that you could choose to have this no, cause this leaf has no decreases in it. But I'm thinking not everybody likes you know, that bell sleeve type of look. So maybe with this version, I'll make it longer, but also have it so that I include decreases with it so that it ends more tapered and more fitted to your arm. I think that might be a good idea. So I'm doing that with this. And also I got enough yarn to make so one sweater that I've been eyeing ever since I've started knitting, honestly, was the Twigs sweater by uh, Junko Okamoto. So I got yarn for it and I know the pattern only calls for three colors. So one main color and then two accent colors. So I was looking through the projects and I saw one that had um, like a faded version of the twigs, which I thought was really cool. So in the end, let's see if I can hold all this together. I got this, these are all palette yarn by Knit Picks, by the way. So let's see if I can hold it. Oh, no, it's covering, my sleeves are covering it. But yeah kind of see the fade. So I was gonna do that at first. See that better. So I was gonna do that at first, but I made a, so I made a swatch. I was trying to figure out how to blend like the colors together as I go. And then I was, it kind of like this, just like have one row 
and just like do a little quick blend before you go on to the next color. But as I was knitting my swatch, I kind of thought about it and I honestly don't really wear sweaters with a lot of color in it or just anything in general. I don't usually wear multicolored pattern things. So, I mean, even just the motifs in the sweater is a bit much for my usual taste, I guess. But I really want to knit this sweater. I really do like the motif in it. I might, I'm trying to make it as wearable as possible um, so that you know, even, and it's not just like I'm knitting to knit it, I'm also knitting to wear it. So, thinking of that, finish that swatch, and then well, let me go, let me go and get the other swatch that I uh, made up after I thought about that. Okay. So, this is the swatch that I made. Um, well, it would have been this way. So this is the fade that I was thinking about. So like this dark brown to this burgundy to this burnt sienna tan type of thing and then to this beige. So this as a sweater would be a lot for me. This I don't think I would really wear if I'm being honest with myself. I don't think I would really wear that that often, although it, it is pretty cool. I still like the idea. I mean, you, if someone out there wants to make a faded twigs, message me because I like thought about the decrease, the, not the decreases, but the fading aspect of it already out. So maybe you could do it, you could take my idea. But yeah, so that's why I thought that oh, it's not really my type of wearable thing. So I made another swatch. This is my third swatch of just the beige. This is just like a color test swatch. So I kind of decided, well, I have a bunch of this beige. I have enough to make it with just this as the background with accents of all the colors that I do have. And I'm thinking I'll do a multicolored twigs, multicolored as in like the motifs would be different colors at each, you know, I don't know if, hopefully I've shown you the picture on the video, but each motif band of motif would have a different color on it. And I'd probably do like, a random number generator or something because it's really hard for me to choose which color would go next but yeah it would be like a random kind of color order because i don't really want it to be like rainbow order like this i mean it'd be okay if it was random like that but i think that definitely would be something that i would where it would have a pop of color have color work which I would want to do. I've never made a color work sweater or anything before. This is a pretty big color work project to start with but this is something that I really truly want to make so I think that would look awesome. So like instead of these two colors would just be this kind of. That would look awesome. So that is my plan. So that was what I decided yesterday. So I'm starting off on my little my little collar here. So, going, or actually it should be this way. The white yarn is just waist yarn because it's a provisional cast on, but I'm pretty excited for that. So I'll be working on that. Um, next week, we're gonna be in Vegas um, at Tim's parents' house, my in-law's house, um, for the whole week of Christmas week, so I am bringing all of my whips, everything, so that I have something to do there for a week. Because although it is Vegas, I'm not really into the whole Vegas scene. So I'm planning to just stay at home and being cozy. It's pretty cold there. 
because it's the desert during winter time so it gets a lot colder than it does get here but i digress so that that's what i got those are my yarn acquisitions i've also got this book acquisition so this is fleece and fiber source book it is i got it because i have a whole stash of Maybe I'll do like some kind of stash video or something because I have a lot of wool fleece that I've kind of identified using this source book because everything that I got was secondhand and it all came from one person and she did not take the time to label everything, which, you know, I mean, do we... I don't think I would have labeled it all either if it was like her lifetime supply and I think there's like I want to say like 70 plus different types of wool in there and a majority of them weren't labeled so I didn't know what to do at first because it was a bit of a guessing game. I mean, I could look at it and feel it and it just felt like wool to me. So I was like, well, it came from a sheep. But I heard about this book on, well, I mean, I didn't hear about it. I saw it on Amazon because I was looking for like some kind of fiber resource book for me to look at to see how to process all that yarn out there or not out there in my stash. So I found this and this book is awesome. If you have... If you love fleece and it's not even like you have it, it's just you want to learn more about it, this is a really great resource book. So it has, let me just show you a page. It has pages like this where they knit up samples or they spun samples different ways. They've also knitted or woven it up too. And they also have like blocks so that you could identify and see what kind of wool you have. And they have so many. It's just like endless. And they have so much information. They have like, um, like average staple length, diameters, block characteristics, the type of colors, like how you should process it, what they recommend. You obviously don't have to follow everything that they say, but it is super helpful. Um, I've like marked the ones that I found because a lot of the places I, I find are very, I mean, you could tell the difference once you look through the whole book and you try to identify stuff, it's pretty easy. So like I have, raw fleece that looks just like this and I've already looked through the book to see if maybe it's something else but this is definitely like I looked at my blocks and read the descriptions and everything and it's definitely rambly so this book was great and is great because I could look through and like if I were to buy some more fleece for some reason even after all of my my whole stash is gone for I just go through all my stash or something then I could just look through here and search it up on eBay or something like, I don't know, find a fleece that I haven't, still haven't had in my stash that I want to spin with. So yeah, this is really helpful. I'll uh, put a link down below for you guys so you guys can check it out. And yeah, that's for, that's it for my acquisitions. So works in progress. Obviously, the twig sweater that I finally decided on. And another work in progress is my column sweater. Using my, my hand spun yarn. So this is like a bulky 30 ply alpaca. Three ply alpaca, very fuzzy. This is kind of in this flat cake, but um, it's a three ply alpaca. The fleece, well, it wasn't a fleece. It was roving that I got in Japan as well in, t in a little shop in Tokyo. 
They don't have like a website or an English name or anything. I'll put the Japanese name down below and if you want, you could always copy and paste it onto your maps and find it. Um, but it's in Tokyo, if you were to go in Tokyo. Um, I put a picture up of like the inside of it. I put it on my Instagram and everyone kind of freaked out because it's like a very small shop. Not very small, but not very big at all. But it's like packed with all this fiber in it. And oh my gosh, it was so cool. I really want to... I'm planning to go back to Japan next year to visit my family and I'm definitely going to go back there to get some more fleet or more roving. But let me see if I could. So I got like the bottom part of my sweater knit up. It's probably going to be cropped again just because I'm kind of scared about how much yardage I have. I only have a limited amount of this yarn and I really don't want to run out because that would suck because I do not, they don't sell this yarn. I made it myself. I don't have any more of the roving either. So hoping for the best, but here it is. It's pretty, pretty large, pretty oversized. So I'm thinking if I do end up running out, I could just rip back and decrease, just rip all the way back, you know, and decrease the amount of stitches um, that I cast on. But yeah, you can kind of see that it's like fuzzy and nubby and it's very thick, thicker than what a regular California, Southern California sweater would go for, but Pretty excited it's like my first hand spun sweater so yeah so it'd probably be cropped like this so you could see that it's like pretty large compared to my body um but i've kind of already gone this far so i don't really want to rip back i don't mind it being oversized it would just bother me if um, I didn't have enough yarn to work the top part because this is just up until the um, armholes and then you knit the sleeve separately and then you attach the sleeves. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm knitting the sleeves. Looks like a jumble mess. I always knit my sleeves two at a time because I do not have time to knit them one at a time. I don't like to knit sleeves so doing that right now. So that's happening and this oh I also have my rift tea by Jacqueline her last name starts with a C I'll put the info up down below but I'm knitting this so I've knit I don't know how I'm gonna show you but this is the front still knitting the back but it calls for, I think, worsted weight, but I had this fingering weight cotton yarn, again from Japan. I'm just knitting up all my Japanese stuff because I want to buy more when I go back. And I don't have an excuse if uh, to buy more unless I use up what I have. But there's this really nice blush color that I really love. It's just a simple stockinette, so this is just like my on the go car knitting type of thing. It's in this nice cotton yarn that's really breathable and would be perfect for if I wanted to wear knits um, on other times of the year apart from the winter. So I think I would probably, she has it um, also as a sweater pattern now, not just as a tee. So I would probably knit this up again using um, another woolier yarn as a sweater too. This is like a really nice versatile pattern. Oh, and it has this like really cool, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a split hem. So it's a split hem. The back hem you could choose to make it longer, the back ribbing I should say longer than the front ribbing and it has this really cool ribbed 
pattern up the side that goes all the way up. And then if you do end up knitting the long sleeves, I think it goes, extends into your sleeves as well. So that's a nice pattern that I'm doing. And then I think that's it for my knitting whips. I also like to hand sew. So I'm not really a machine sewist just cause I hate taking it out, putting it back. Like it's not very, and you can't really take it anywhere. It's just very, very like a sit down in one place and work on it all day type of thing for sewing for me. And I don't really care for that. So I usually hand stitch my garments. So I'm working on, oh man. Oh, it's called the Lou Box Top Tee or Lou Box Top. This is inside out. So let me show you. I think I have a needle in here, so I'm gonna just take that up. So, I've got this um, like woven fabric that I'm pretty sure is for furniture, but whatever. I think it's like a cotton polyester thing, but it's like this uneven nubby striped fabric. Sorry, it's really wrinkled. And I finished the shoulder seams already. So this is the inside. It looks really messy and gross because it keeps unraveling. It's like not the best thing to hand sew with because you have to kind of stitch in the end so that it doesn't unravel into itself once you're finished. But so I finished the shoulder seams. So it looks relatively like a shirt. So the next step is to do the um, hem for the sleeves and then to, oops, and then to stitch down the side. And then I'm probably gonna do another split seam here. And then it's like a curved um, high-low type of shirt. So it's longer in the back and in the front. And then I also have, there's also this nice back seam here. And obviously I did not pattern match, which may pain some people to see, but uh, I'm not really that much of a sewist really. I just like to, the motion of repetitively, repetitively stitching is like really nice for me. So yeah. I'm doing that, getting it done little by little. Honestly, I'm much more of a knitter, so I'm like gravitating all my time towards my knitting whips rather than my sewing whip. But it's nice to have as a little, little, uh, I don't know, palette cleanser, I guess, when I don't really feel like knitting for some reason, which is not that often. So it's taken me a little while, but I do have other fabric too that I got about a month ago. I got this like, should I show you? I'll go get it real quick. So yeah, I guess this is part of my acquisitions, but I got this nice heavyweight burnt umber red orange linen. And I have enough to make a jumpsuit out of it. For the jumpsuit, I'm not sure. Is that too big of a thing to hand stitch? Is that unreasonable? Am I being crazy? Let me know if I am because I really do want to hand stitch it. That's just what I like to do versus machine knitting. But I don't know if that's just like a very unreasonable task. I mean, it doesn't take that long to hand stitch something. I feel like it's more like knitting, like it just takes longer but it's not an unreasonable amount of time where it's like stupid to do so i have enough for a jumpsuit and probably something else i'm not sure oh and i'm probably gonna make the um carmella jumpsuit pattern from no i forget the name of the company fiber fiber something i'll i'll put that somewhere somewhere here 
and that's probably what I'll make with that. And then I also got this, I don't know what kind of, it looks like some kind of like woven cotton material, but I think this would be perfect as a um, Wixton Hari. So this will be like a really nice light cover up cardigan type of thing to have during the summertime. So that one, this one I'll definitely be hand stitching. It's, it doesn't require too many pattern pieces, I think. So yeah, I got all this at like this um, discount fiber store in Oakland, California while we were up for business or we as in my husband and I. So yeah, got that. I guess that was actually part of the acquisitions. Another whip, I think the last thing is that I am currently also spinning up. This is my first queen of, um, I was aiming for a fingering weight, but it bloomed quite a bit during the wash and I didn't do a, um, test spin because I do not learn and so I think it's more of a I want to say maybe sport weight maybe light worsted type of yarn but it's like this two ply I don't know where should I put this Well, it's like this two ply yarn. I don't know how to make it. Sorry, I don't know how to make it uh, um, focus on this. Anyways, two ply yarn made of this um, pole worth from my stash. So this is like the washed pole worth. I have like two more bags of these. And then combined with this unidentified green top roving um yeah i don't know what kind of fiber this is i want to say it's like some kind of silk because it's so shiny like it shine it like shines in the light so i know it's not just wool i don't know i want to say it's like some kind of silk thing it's pretty old it's like pretty matted into itself so i kind of have to like wiggle it out before I spin it. But yeah, it's a two ply of those yarns together. Oh, here's the single with the pole worth by itself, super soft. So I think I'll have enough to make myself a cardigan. Um, I'm planning to make a cardigan called Bloom, Bloom by Marion M. Knits. Um, it's like this really nice, simple cardigan that's like a bit, not puffy, but it has a really interesting silhouette, like it's not just straight. And then it also has a bits of um, details of like blooms, I guess, on the sides. Um, but yeah, I think this will look really pretty in that. I want something simple with this yarn just because it's like a marl type of two-ply. So I think that'll be really nice with that and <laughs> the pattern calls for a fingering weight and obviously not obviously but I don't think this is fingering weight but probably just make a gauge swatch and just um figure out the math and um knit it for this because I, I am pretty set on that pattern for this guy um I think that's it guys i think that's it for my first podcast um thank you so much for joining me today it's really nice to talk about it with people there's i mean i'm sure if you guys are in if any of you are in the southern california area or the specifically los angeles i'm in la and i want to meet up to knit or something just message me comment down below um if you want to talk about knitting Obviously, I love to talk about knitting, um, spinning, weaving, um, yeah, 
just reach out. I'd love to talk. Um, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram again as Cozy Cardigans or on Ravelry as Cozy Cardigans. Um, for Instagram, it's Cozy underscore Cardigans. Ravelry is just Cozy Cardigans. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. It was really fun. I'm planning to have some more videos up of just maybe vlogs, maybe spinning with me videos, um, knitting with me videos, stuff like that. It's just like a nice virtual way to hang out with you guys. So yeah, thanks for joining me.